A lot of you guys have been requesting a video on AI voiceover, so here it is. I'm gonna share with you the most important things if you're really serious about AI voice. And I'm gonna try and make it simple for this first episode on the topic. First, the main tips to use the right voice engine. Second, how to put emotion into your voice. And as you know me by now, I always try to put some fun into it. So I'll try to dub this scene from Shrek. They stink? Yes. No. Oh, they make you cry? No. Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hands. We'll try to do it with AI voice and hopefully with the same emotions. And thirdly, the method to create your script. And most importantly, how to sync it with your content in CapCut. But hold on a second. When you say AI voice, most people think of this. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. Or this. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the channel. But AI voice can also be this. Hey, guys. Um... I am also an AI voice, like, but at least I'm better than those generic voices. Like AI voice can produce some surprising results. Hey, everybody. How do you like my accent? So let's get right into it. The voice engine. You'll find plenty of AI voices out there, but I preferred what Eleven Labs had to offer. Better pricing model, better voices, and better features. But even inside Eleven Labs, you can get varied results. See this page over here? I'm sure many of you use this one, and it's not good for long-form content. What you want to do is get a plan that has the projects feature. You get it starting this third plan right here, and this is a game changer. And here is why. In the normal text-to-speech feature, you get to generate all at once. This means that if you need to change a portion of your text, you have to regenerate the whole thing. This will eat up your credit, and it won't even give a good result. In the projects mode, on the other hand, you can use chapters. And if you don't like something, you can simply regenerate, and it will only cost the new characters. Plus, you can keep regenerating until you get the result that you want. For any script longer than 30 seconds, you simply can't do without this feature. So, let's move on to the next tip to better understand how it works. I want to dub this scene from Shrek with AI voice. First, we need a voice for Shrek and one for the donkey. So we head to the voice library, set the right filters, male animation character, and start testing out the available voices. If you spend your... On every thorn, delightful wisdom grows. Just trust yourself. Bear in mind that some voices are more expressive than others. The donkey will actually be a challenge because Eddie Murphy just can't be imitated. But I think this voice here will do just fine. Love doesn't make the world go round. Love is what makes the ride worthwhile. And for Shrek's voice, I chose this one. A man sees in the world what he carries in his heart. Now we head to our project. I created a chapter for Shrek and a chapter for the donkey. We put the script as it is, and we test. Example. Okay, um, ogres are like onions. Yes, no, no, no. Yes, no, layers. No, layers. Onions have layers. No, no. No, layers, onions have layers. What the f is this? But it's not yet what we're looking for. So, to communicate to the AI what expression we want, we only have these two ways, characters in the text and the context. So what we can do is play with the text. We can play around capital letters in so many ways, and each will give a different result. We can put a word between quotation marks. This is actually the one I use the most. We can play with punctuation in a lot of ways, and each will give a different result. You can also manage the flow and the rhythm by adding spaces, hyphens, commas, and periods. And of course, the way to do it is to mix it all up in a single prompt for an expressive voice. But you can also tweak the text to use the AI's ability to understand context. However, you won't be able to command the AI, like to laugh or to yell. All you can do is try to give it some context to produce a better generation. And above all, with an exact same text, simply regenerating will give you each time a different result. So after reworking the script with all of these tricks, I get this text. And here are the two versions for you to compare. The original script. Example, okay. Um, ogres are like onions. Yes, no, no. No. Layers, onions have layers. And the reworked script. Example? Okay. Um, ogres are like onions. Yes! No. No! No! Layers! Onions have layers. Now, we can do the same thing for the donkey voice using the same technique. And head to CapCut to sync it all up. I already made a video on lip sync, so check it out if you haven't yet. The goal will be to align the audio signal between the clip and the voice. You have the clip audio signal, 
just over here, and your voice signal. You can see that the signals match. They should, it's the same words. So you have to start by locating each and every word in both signals, audio and clip. Then cut each of them. Make sure to cut only where a signal is at zero. When you've done this for all the words, you'll find yourself with unaligned segments. What you need to do is increase or reduce the clip speed to make the signals match perfectly. Use this duration changer rather than the speed changer. We do this for Shrek and for the donkey, and we get this nice little result. Example? Okay, um... Ogres are like onions. They stink? Yes. No. Oh, they make you cry? No! Oh, you leave them out in the sun, they get all brown, start sprouting little white hairs. No! Layers! Onions have layers. Example? Okay. Um, ogres are like onions. They stink? Yes. No. Or they make you cry? No! Oh, or you leave them in the sun and they get brown and start sprouting little white hair? No! Layers! Onions have layers. Okay, this is just an example, but you get the point. But I also know most of you want to create scripts and sync them with your content. And here is how to do it. Let's start with the obvious stuff. The method for writing with AI voice is totally different than the classical method. With an AI voice, you need to first imagine your script and your media along each other, and you need to have a lot of anticipation. Once you have a clear idea of your path, you need to start collecting your visual media, recordings, images, clips, and so on, and take note of all important landmarks to put in your script. Once you have that, you start writing your script and always have to be agile to adjust your media or your script until you build your final draft. There should be lots of back and forths between the visual and the voice construction. Then you head to CapCut and start with the sync. And it's a little bit similar to the dubbing example. Okay, so let's say I have this clip with three important actions. First thing to do is to cut right at those actions. It can be as precise as you want it to be. Then you go locate the corresponding action in the audio. You speed up or speed down the preceding clip to be perfectly aligned, and you bring your clip containing the action and align it with the audio. If you can spare part of your clip, then instead of changing the speed, you can simply trim it to do your adjustment. Do this for all your segments. And remember, the shorter the segments, the more sync and precise your video will be. Before we wrap up, Today, AI voice is used in so many types of content, documentaries, YouTube channels, courses, and so on. And it's a good thing. It can spare you the complex hassle of recording your own voice. And some people are just not comfortable with their own voice. Hello. <laughs> and it offers multiple languages that you probably don't speak, and you can target broader audiences this way. So explore the power of AI voice and let me know how you get the best of it down in the comment section. If you like the content, don't forget that subscribe button. And until next time, cheers.